Is the mic okay? Great. All right, so too loud, yeah. Is this okay? Too quiet? Okay. All right, so I'm motivated by, I'm going to talk about this problem throughout the talk. Um, we're imagining there's some sort of online marketplace. We have n users of the marketplace and m merchants. And at each time period, a single user is considering purchasing an item from a single merchant. So we might imagine that someone has searched for an item that they're interested in, they find a merchant who's selling that item, and then they need to make the decision about whether to purchase the item or not. Uh, and if they decide to interact with the merchant, then they receive some payoff, which we're just going to represent as a number in negative 1, 1. And we're going to play the role of some centralized recommendation service or reputation system that's advising the users on whether they should engage in these interactions. Uh, and our goal is basically to make good recommendations or to make recommendations that make the users happy. So I'm going to talk about this in the context of an online marketplace, but the setting is obviously very general. And so all we care about are there are these items, there are some users, and the users are making decisions about whether to interact with these items. So the intuition is that different users may have sort of shared tastes. Uh, they may like the same kinds of things or dislike the same kinds of things. And a fraudulent merchant uh, may try and rip off many different customers. Right? So we hope that the users can pull information in order to learn faster than if they just ignore each other. But at the same time, we expect some users to behave maliciously. And certainly users, some users will have different taste. Um, and so we expect that if users just shared data and trusted the data they received from other users as if it was their own, then performance could be worse, potentially much worse. Right? So a malicious user may be able to report data that influences the behavior of the other users quite a lot if they take it at face value. And the question is, can we get the benefits of sharing? Right? Can we get sort of this faster learning that we'd expect from people pooling their data without paying the costs of being vulnerable to manipulation? I think the status quo, right? so we in fact have lots of systems of this form that we run today. Uh, you could say, I mean, we, we do deal with these problems. I think there's some sense in which existing solutions are somewhat unsatisfactory. So we very often rely on some combination of just avoiding applying reputation systems in high stakes situations, trusting people to mostly be nice, um, relying on just interacting over and over again with a small number of really large merchants. Right? Those I very, just very rarely deal with some person who I'm not going to deal with again. Expecting dishonest people to give themselves away. For example, we expect fraudulent reviews to use bad grammar uh, or to be posted at weird times of day, or to have no friends. Keeping algorithms private so they're harder to manipulate, making explicit rules against manipulation, uh, giving up our statistical power, relying on really binary notions of whether this was a good or bad interaction. Um, and the question is, can we do better? Right? So I think if you squint, the situation sort of looks a little bit like pre-modern cryptography. Right? We kind of are relying on security by obscurity and hoping for the best. We might hope to have systems which can incorporate additional feedback with, without being vulnerable even in principle to the kind of manipulation that we're concerned about. Okay, so again, we're putting ourselves in the position of the central recommendation service, telling users whether they should interact. So a user asks us, should I interact with this merchant? We're going to make some recommendation about whether they should interact. A traditional goal would be for us to maximize the total payoff of the users. So to have in mind some sort of benchmark class of strategies, maybe represented by low rank matrices or something like this. And then to say, can we get a payoff for the users that's competitive with the payoff of the benchmark, or close to the payoff of the benchmark. And the concern is that this can be a very weak guarantee if some users are behaving maliciously. So in particular, if we imagine that, say, 10% of users are malicious, a malicious user might interact with a fraudulent merchant and report a high payoff. And from the perspective of our system, returning a high payoff with a malicious user, if, our, if we have this regret bound that just cares about the total payoff of the users, a high payoff for a malicious user is just as good as a high payoff for an honest user. So our system will be indifferent to changes which increase the payoff of the malicious users and decrease the payoff of the honest users of the system. So if, if the only bound on the behavior of our system is a regret bound on the total payoff of all the users, then we're sort of inherently vulnerable to this kind of manipulation, where the dishonest users benefit at the expense of the honest users. And you can work out exactly how bad these attacks can get. And what you see is something like if 10% of users are malicious, then roughly 10% of interactions can be very bad without breaking any sort of regret bound that is just concerned with the total payoff of all the users. Um, so you could wonder, maybe this is an artifact of the kind of bounds we're proving. Uh, but in most cases, or if you look at most algorithms that exist, there actually are attacks of this form. So a small number of malicious users can create sort of a lot of trouble for honest users of the system. And this sort of quantitatively, the attack is about as bad as you might think was possible. Right? So if 10% of users or merchants of the system are malicious, 
10% of interactions being really bad is what you'd expect to get just by picking randomly in each interaction. So in some sense, this can eat up basically all of the gains from using a reputation system to try and screen out malicious merchants. So our goal instead is to maximize the total payoff of the users who we care about. Um, for example, we might care about only the users who are behaving honestly. We might care about only the users who like a certain genre of music or only the users who have good taste. Uh, and we're not even going to actually make any assumptions about which users we care about. That is, we're going to prove bounds that hold for every set of users simultaneously. So you could then apply them for any set of users. Um, again, I'm so most interested in the setting or the set of users who behave honestly, but it's also interesting to consider users who have some particular shared taste or users who have some particular preference. So more precisely, we have some unknown set of users. I'll call it H throughout the talk. We care about the total payoff of the users in H. Um, and we're comparing that payoff to the, this benchmark. The benchmark is given by defining a fixed set of merchants, which I'll call S, and recommending interaction with a merchant if and only if that merchant is in the set S. So we'll then try and bound the regret, which is just the difference between the total payoff of users in H and the payoff which they would have achieved by following this benchmark, or if we had made recommendations according to this benchmark. And maybe additional assumption is that every user in H should actually follow the recommendations of our algorithm. So an immediate corollary, if we can bound this regret for every set H, is we can also compete with a more sophisticated benchmark that divides the users into any number of parts and makes different recommendations for each part. Right? Namely, we could apply our regret bound to each of those parts separately and get some bound on this, yeah, compared to this more sophisticated benchmark. So quantitatively, uh, we want to converge to a low per round regret. So to say on the average round, we're making recommendations about as good as this benchmark. And we can think about our performances being characterized by how long it takes us to converge to that regret. Uh, we would like that time, the number of interactions per user, to depend polynomially on this sort of precision that we're targeting. So like you'd expect a 1 over epsilon squared dependence. We're going to get 1 over epsilon cubed, but should depend on the number of items per user. Right? If there's like a 10 merchants for every user, then you imagine that each user needs to interact with, learn about 10 merchants. It will depend on the fraction of users who are honest or who are in the set H that we care about. But in particular, it shouldn't depend on N or M. So if we're imagining deploying the system with a million users and a million merchants, there shouldn't be any, you should be able to learn an amount of time that's totally independent of a million. So we should be able to apply the same system with a thousand or a million or a billion users and get comparable regret bounds per user. Okay, so now I'm gonna review the actual regret bounds. So these are the, basically the statements of the results. Um, for comparison, we can consider some ideal case where the users in the set H knew each other's identity in advance and pooled all of their data and just treated it as if they were solving these M parallel two-armed bandit problems. Right? So we can view each merchant as some two-armed bandit problem. We have to decide interact or not interact in each round. So if they pooled their data perfectly, you get something like square root TM regret. Right? That is, yeah, you get square root TM regret because you're solving M parallel bandit problems. You're treating all of the users in the set as if they were just a single user who gets to interact, make a choice in every round. So in this talk, instead, we're going to get a regret bound that's very similar to the regret bound we get in the ideal case, but with two changes. So first, the dependence on t is t to the 2 thirds instead of t to the 1 half. So that's unfortunate. That's just the algorithm is not optimal. Um, the second change is that we have this term n in the regret bound. That's like the time required to learn which users you should trust. Um, so if the number of merchants is much smaller than the number of users, then unfortunately that term is going to dominate. Um, when the number of merchants and users are comparable, then this is going to be close to this sort of theoretical optimum. On the right, these are the numbers, this is the performance for each user. Right? So in the case where we have perfect sharing, each user is basically going to get the same regret as if they were solving a bandit problem, um, or you know, m over n parallel bandit problems. So we can sort of imagine assigning the merchants to users, if there's one merchant per user, then each user is going to have the same regret as if they were solving a single two-armed bandit problem. Okay. Uh, so some of this difference between our results and the kind of intuitive benchmark is statistically necessary, and some is a limitation of our algorithm. So we can also talk about an intractable algorithm, or like the statistical lower bound for, for this problem, where we care about every set H simultaneously. Uh, and the main points are just, it depends, it has the correct dependence on t, so we are definitely not yet optimal in terms of t. And also, uh, it doesn't have this term n, instead it has this term that depends on the prior probability of the set h, under some distribution on subsets of the users. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is the this is the result we're going for. It's what we're going to prove in the rest of the talk. So there's a, uh, I mean, this is in some sense a very general problem statement. So there's a lot of work that looks in some sense like this or deals with similar problems. Uh, probably the most closely similar work is on collaborative bandit problems. So sort of in our setting, in each step you need to make a decision, a yes/no decision about whether to interact with a particular merchant. We could also consider a case where in each round you get to choose one merchant from the universe of available merchants. And you see the payoff for the merchant you chose. So in that case, the optimal strategy is just, or your goal is just to find the single best merchant and use that merchant in every round. Um, in some sense, that problem is harder in that you have to make some statistical assumptions for it to even be possible. In particular, you have to assume that different users get the same payoff if they, uh, different users in H get the same payoff in the same round if they interact with the optimal resource. But in some sense, this problem is also easier, and you just sort of need to pick one good resource and have the knowledge of that resource spread through the network. So the result is that the algorithms look completely different between these settings. There's basically no technical overlap. Uh, there's another literature on manipulation resistance, especially in peer-to-peer -peer systems and collaborative recommender systems. These typically get really strong robustness guarantees, so often they aim for something like perfect robustness to Sybils, which are fake accounts created to try and manipulate the system. But they tend to learn extremely slowly. Uh, at least, yeah, they tend to learn extremely slowly. So there's a large literature on collaborative filtering, which I'm not going to go into. Um, the main distinction is that we're really targeting this kind of robustness, where if you add malicious users to the system who choose their reports arbitrarily to try and make the system behave worse, then our system doesn't do significantly worse. So they're not able to degrade the performance of the honest users. And again, this is occurring because we obtain this bound for every subset H simultaneously. So for whatever set of users we care about, we get a bound on the behavior or the performance of those users. And the number of dishonest users enters into the regret bound only in a relatively weak way. Uh, there's also this sort of smaller literature, or a couple papers from 2006, 2008, um, on learning preference. Like, you have a, imagine you have a bunch of users in a similar setting. There are a bunch of items. The users want to learn how good each item is. Uh, but we imagine that a user can probe in each round. They can probe any of the resources. I make some assumption on how similar the preferences of different users are to each other. So Assume that we can divide them into clusters and within each cluster have similar preferences. I think none of these results really work under the same, we're really trying to target making very minimal assumptions and getting very strong robustness to manipulation and having, you know, again, doing quite well compared to this benchmark where we we're just aggregating all of the data and learning as efficiently as possible from the aggregated data. Okay, so our first algorithm, um, the rest of the talk is just going to be presenting the algorithm and the analysis. So a first algorithm, uh, recall that we're in the setting, or we're putting ourselves in the position of some central recommendation service. So pairs of users are coming to us and asking, or a user and a merchant are coming to us and asking, should this user interact with this merchant? So one idea would be to consider all of the possible subsets of the users and merchants, and to consider each of these subsets as a strategy. So each one corresponds to the strategy of recommending an interaction between two users, if and only if they both lie, or between a user and a merchant, if and only if they both lie in this set. So we'd recommend this interaction, we wouldn't recommend this interaction, we wouldn't recommend this interaction. So we have this exponentially large space of possible strategies. Uh, we can just t treat this as an expert's problem, or as a contextual bandit's problem. Uh, and we can get some regret bound, you know, we can do, get a total payoff almost as good as if we had chosen the best fixed subset S, X. And our regret bound will look very similar to the kinds of bounds we're going for. Right, it'll be basically square root of T times n plus m. So this algorithm has two problems. The first is that it's completely computationally intractable. So we're considering exponentially many possible subsets. This is actually sort of the easy problem. Uh, the second problem is that because we're just making a guarantee on the total payoff of all of the users, it's relatively easy to manipulate, for dishonest users to manipulate the behavior of this algorithm. And so the users who behave honestly may get quite a bad payoff. So first, I'll talk about resolving the computational efficiency issue. Right, so the, the problem is there are too many sets x to consider each one explicitly. Right, so we wanted to consider this exponentially large space of strategies corresponding to all the possible subsets, but we can't actually reason about each one of them. The observation is that we don't actually care about, you know, we, in some sense, we want to maintain a whole distribution over all possible subsets x. We don't actually care about, you know, we don't care about the whole subset x. We just care about these pairwise interactions. We want to know, is this user in x and is this merchant in x? So instead of representing a whole distribution over subsets, we can summarize it by this matrix of moments, which records for each pair what is the probability that this user should interact with this merchant. 
And instead of trying to compete with the best subset, we really want to compete with the best matrix of this form. Um, and we can, instead of competing with the best matrix that arises from a subset, a distribution over subsets, we can compete with the best PSD matrix. This is a strictly larger class of matrices, but there's sufficient algorithms for getting low regret versus, versus this class. OK, so for the rest of the talk, I'm basically just going to ignore this computational issue. Everything will work out. The second problem is that we want the system to be manipulation resistant. So we want to get bounds for every subset of the user simultaneously. And in some sense, this is the core problem. The idea is that we're iteratively going to construct a relatively complex policy. So instead of using online learning to decide who should interact in a round, we're going to use online learning to make a modification to our current policy. So our current policy is represented by this table. Right? The, this entry says, like, what's the probability that some user should interact with some merchant? So we get, in round T, we get given some candidate interaction. So we're supposed to answer, should this user interact with this merchant? We're going to look at the corresponding entry of the table to decide what's the probability that they should interact. But before making the recommendation, we're going to first update our policy. So we're going to use online learning to pick these updates. We're going to choose an update which would have worked well in the past. I'll just say what works well means in a second. The set of possible updates corresponds to picking, each update corresponds to picking some generalized rectangle and either increasing or decreasing the weight of each, you know, the interaction probabilities of each pair in that rectangle. So in this case, we pick this rectangle, we increase all the weights in that rectangle, and now we recommend an interaction with probability 0.8. So then after making that recommendation, we see the payoff for the user, at least if we recommend an interaction. Um, we then assign a payoff to the update. The payoff for an update is how much it changed the payoff in the next round. Right? So for this update, it increased the probability of interaction from 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, and the payoff of the interaction was negative 1. So we can evaluate this update. We give this update a score of negative 0 0.3. So then in the next round, we're going to pick you know, another interaction. We have to decide whether it should occur. Uh, we have to pick another update, we make the update, and then we recommend interaction with probability 0 0.5. So we keep going in every round, we pick an update that would have worked well historically. We use that to update this table of possible of interaction probabilities. Um, the way we do the analysis is we suppose there's some set of users, H, who could have done better by interacting with some set of merchants, S, and only merchants in S. If such sets exist, then there is some update which would have made the, users, the total payoff of all the users better. Namely, we could either have told the users in H to start interacting more with merchants in S, or we could have told users in H to stop interacting with merchants outside of S. So one of these two updates would increase the total payoff of all the users if there is any subset H who's underperforming our benchmark. Um, that means by the online learning guarantee that the actual updates we chose also improve the... Uh, each update we chose on average improve the payoff in the next round. So if we fail to meet our regret bound, then the average update must be improving the payoffs a lot. And our hope is this can never happen. Right? So one reason to think it can never happen is the payoffs are bounded between negative 1 and 1. So if in every round we're choosing an update that makes payoffs significantly higher, um, that seems surprising, right? Somehow the, you're moving, the worst starting case was negative 1, the best final case is 1. There should be some bound on how often you can significantly improve the situation. So I'm not going to give the analysis of why that can't happen. There's like, the thing we want to rule out is like the case where our policy is going around in a circle but the sort of optimal update in each step is adjusting. Um, yeah. It sort of makes some intuitive sense that you can't have too many positive updates. Uh, I'm not going to talk. Yeah, so that's actually it for the analysis. Right? We said if there was a subset H that could have done better, then we find some change which could have improved the total payoff. Uh, and then we can rule that out. I'm not going to talk about the reputation system case. So we could generalize this problem setting to giving a payoff to both the user and the merchant and have them both make a choice about whether they want to interact and potentially receive different payoffs. Um, that's in the paper. And in conclusion, so we're able to get this relatively strong guarantee on the behavior or the total payoff of the users in any set H under pretty minimal assumptions. Um, there's lots of room for improvement. So the bounds are, have a suboptimal dependence on T, not quite an optimal dependence on N. Um, you could compete with a better benchmark. You could have a distributed implementation. You could generalize to other learning problems. Um, but I think it's interesting. There's this question like, was this possible? Is it possible to get a guarantee that's extremely robust to manipulative users? And I think that there's sort of a lot of room for optimism about that now. Thanks.